So it's April here on the farm and we are starting to paint what I call the blank canvas, which is all of our beds that have been prepped and amended and full of nutrition and stuff to plant whatever we want to plant for the year. And we are trying to fill every square inch of space that we can that in the soil that we've prepped with all of the beautiful nutrition and everything. And we're here in my tomato greenhouse, which is a really good example of this. And um, what we've got going on here is what I call tomato interplanting. So these are all our greenhouse tomatoes. Just planted them on Monday. They're really just starting to grow. And, uh, but they take forever to get big enough to take up the space of a bed. So we do a lot of interplanting with tomatoes, cucumbers even, uh, basically any big plant that takes a long time to grow, we do a side crop to get a lot more production in the same amount of space. It's tricks like these that can really maximize the yield that you get from a tiny space. Each one of these beds is 40 feet long by 30, by, uh, 30 inches. So it's honestly about the same size as your average garden but we're basically getting two crops for the price of one with these interplants. So we got here, we have tomatoes and bok choy. Um, <coughs> oh, it's spring. Yeah, I got um, pollen going around. So bless me. Uh, and we have uh, tomatoes and radishes over here and tomatoes and beets over here. and. Um, you know, this is the, the farming version of what I'm talking about, but the same thing applies on your garden or your homestead or your land, whatever you're doing to grow food. If you do stuff like this, and, and the key detail with this is knowing the timing of when your crops are going to be ready. You know, you can't grow kale next to the tomatoes because the kale is going to take too long to get mature. But what we planted next to the tomatoes are all very quick growing crops that are going to be ready fast. That's another part of this technique. So all of these, almost all of these went in as a transplant. So the bok choy went in as a transplant earlier than the tomatoes. Then we plant the tomatoes. By the time the bok choy is ready, it'll be out and the tomatoes will start to fill up the whole bed. And uh, so this works really well with crops like lettuce, radishes, bok choy, beets. Um, and it works extra well when you tr have transplants ready to plant. That's why in my last video, I was talking about an assembly line of food. The biggest part of making that successful is growing plants in your nursery in a controlled environment regularly. Have plants ready to plant every week. And so we've got in our nursery, we have basically a year's worth of food growing right now that we planted at different times, but um, we're planting new quick crops all the time. So I'm going to show you a couple more examples of this and hopefully this gets your wheels turning in your garden, homestead, farm, whatever you're doing. Um, and these little tricks can really help maximize your yields. And you might be worried about taking too much from the soil. Well, um, you know, we're very conscious of that here at the farm and how we deal with that is you constantly feed it, you know? So if you are doing something like this and you're worried about that, especially with stuff like tomatoes, we do a, a weekly feeding of them anyway, um, but we are constantly adding multiple kinds of nutrition to the soil other than just compost. Because compost, you know, that's a pretty labor-intensive thing, even in a garden, you know. Moving an inch of compost on any garden bed is quite a bit of work. But stuff like alfalfa meal, uh, Jadam liquid fertilizer, which you could Google that. There's a whole universe of fertility there. There's all sorts of tricks to add more nutrition to your soil and over time, this becomes easier and easier. You don't have to, you know, worry about it as much because the soil is just so rich in fertility. But this technique is a really cool way to maximize your yields in however small of a space you have. All right, so beside me here, we've got another example of interplanting. So everything in this greenhouse is interplants for the May planting of tomatoes. So. Those were our early tomatoes in the other greenhouse. Uh, this is May, um, so it's about a month or six weeks later. 
and so these interplants are a little bit younger but it's honestly a lot of the same stuff so we just got the paper pot transplanter which you can google that's a really fun tool for farms well yeah it's just a cool tool game changing tool for uh, planting a whole lot in a uh, very short period of time but probably don't need that for your garden or homestead um, but for me on this scale it's a really big game changer when you're paying employees to transplant stuff but anyway I'll go over that in another video but this is uh, these are Hakurai turnips over here and we're still learning the paper pot too we've probably made some mistakes because some of them are growing well but most of them are doing okay and they were grown in a paper chain and just grow, like plowed into the soil and then the soil gets pushed around them uh, as you pull and they're growing all right and these will be ready long before the tomatoes get big we're not even going to plant the tomatoes in here for at least a month um, and so they'll be almost ready probably by the time the tomatoes are going in we'll pull them out and we'll put in a fresh line of feather meal or alfalfa meal or something and pretty much the same story with these tiny little beets here they're really small now but they've got plenty of time to grow and get big before the uh, tomatoes take over the space so just one more example of that and we have one more to show you so here's one more example of how you can interplant in a space where you get another crop mature before your big crop takes over this is spinach um, and these are sugar snap peas and I actually didn't really plan this I kind of had to do it because I was figuring out that I had way too many paper pots for this bed over here of spinach so I was like you know might as well try and plant them and see what happens and this I just know from experience that these take quite a while to get really big and bushy they're getting there now these will grow six feet tall that's why we got these tre this trellis here um, and we did this with the paper pot and it was Definitely a learning curve. I'm learning quite a bit. It's it's uh, a paper pot's a really cool tool, but you got to learn how to use it. And my soils, you know, you got to learn how to use it in my soil. But it's it's awesome. But the paper pot's actually kind of like the farming version of what I'm talking about because this makes it so I could plant a whole 50 foot bed in five minutes. But in your garden, if you just have six plants, like six beet plants, and you have a little space opened in a bed. You could plant those six beet plants in your gaps, you know, of whatever is still growing, or there's all sorts of cool stuff you could do with this interplanting concept. Um, you could even sow carrots underneath lettuce plants and stuff like that, you know. Um, you watch them germinate, and their carrots will be growing and take forever to grow while you're harvesting that lettuce. And by the time the lettuce is done, you could pull it out, the carrots will start ha have a lot more room to grow. You know, there's all sorts of little tricks like that to maximize the production in the same space. So these, like I said, these peas are probably, you know, a month at least until they're going to like really take over the space and I'll harvest the spinach once or twice and then I'll pull it and I'll, I'll feed the soil with a lot more fertility to make sure the peas have enough nutrition. And there's already a ton of nutrition. We put an inch of compost in here and a whole bunch of feather meal and stuff. Um, to feed the soil before we planted this stuff. I actually just did the spinach thing kind of by accident basically, but um, that's kind of what that by accident thing is something you'll get good at as you get experience with this. You'll just kind of know the timing. You know, I'm like I got the, the key to this is having the plants ready all the time. The more often that you have the plants ready in your nursery, you're going to figure out a place to plant them and you're going to get used to when they're going to be ready at the time of year that you're planting them and that's a whole rabbit hole um, I have a garden course right now that we're selling through homesteadmentors.com where we are walking you through how to start a garden especially in a place like Wyoming where I'm at and I go over a lot of the timing and stuff for these crops in detail if you're interested in that I'm going to put the link in the description um, but because uh, it is kind of hard to explain in a really short video like this but uh, the bottom line is uh, when you get experience with this concept of interplanting and maximizing your yields in a small space, you can really make some cool things happen with a tiny little garden. You know, I could I could do some really cool stuff with one 50 foot bed. If I was just growing for myself, I could do all sorts of cool stuff um, to maximize the 
food that I could put into my root cellar, fridge, feed my family with, you know, whatever I want to do with all the techniques that we teach in that gardening course. So if you're interested in that and a whole bunch more, check out the link in the description and we'll see you in the next one. Hope you have a great week.